anti afro Spengalis. Listen, everybody, I wanted to come on here to make sure I gave my feedback and address the issues that have been brought up about young Pharaoh. He has been accused by the mother of his two children. Her name is Golden Beauty. And I'm saying her name because she does post videos on YouTube. She's not in secret or hiding or anything like that. She's been very open about telling her story, not just about what she says were domestic violence episodes, but how their situation as a relationship deteriorated because of polygamy slash communal living. We do not have polygamy in this country because it is outlawed. That has been going on. But before I go any further, I want to say two things. Number one, this is the most important thing. If you are a victim of domestic violence, if you know someone who is a victim of domestic violence, I strongly encourage you to either adopt these strategies or encourage the person to do so. Me giving this information is not giving any sort of view at this point anyway, about whether or not young Pharaoh actually did commit these acts. We're gonna talk about that. But first and foremost, safety is top priority. You see the basic safety plan and then you have the number to the National Domestic Violence Hotline. When you call this number, they will be able to give you the resources that are local in your area if you have not researched that yourself. They will be able to help you with that. So I wanted to get that out of the way. Number two, I am not going to talk about how and why I became a supporter, a strong supporter of Young Pharaoh at the beginning of the video, because I want to get right to the domestic violence situation. I put this at the end of the video. If you are interested, I will have the timestamp. If you are interested in knowing how and why I became a very strong supporter of Young Pharaoh, but I definitely want to address these allegations of domestic violence. When I first heard about this, I just started looking at the video titles, trying to figure out and this was in the last 48 hours, which video am I going to click on? I just want to see if there's any accurate updated information that can shed light on this because there were a lot of dramatic videos posted out there. People have a right to post their videos and their content, but I was trying to find some facts. So I saw a video and I'm posting it down at the bottom. It says young Pharaoh arrested for domestic violence. Oh, I'm clicking that on because I want to see definitely, absolutely what happened here. So I click on the video and it was of Golden Beauty. And she was extremely upset, had been crying, obviously has been through something. And she was yelling and it appears to be she's yelling at young Pharaoh. And I have a clip. You can click it on. Thankfully, there is significant distance between the two. That's a good thing because if someone has attacked you, as she has asserted, the last thing you want to do is remain in close proximity to this person. So she was yelling things, curse words, just extremely upset. Who wouldn't be upset? You're saying someone jumped on you and hit you and pulled your hair and dragged you. And she claims young Pharaoh hit her while she had their child in her arms. So it was just a few, maybe not minutes. I noticed that she's holding the baby in her arms. The baby looks to be about maybe eight months old. There was a quick flash of the baby and then later on the baby's shown in the car, but she's reciting what happened, which is very upsetting, obviously to her. She's telling what's going on in the home and she's giving some history and she has the baby in her arms the baby is clearly distressed it's very upsetting which is why i don't want to play any of this you have your freedom whether or not you want to click on the video so she's giving her view about what occurred she's stating her claim that she is a victim of domestic violence and so the police officer shows up the first police officer shows up and thankfully the first thing that he did was take care of the baby because apparently it was hot out there and he wanted to make sure the baby was comfortable. 
thankfully, because you get upset, you're, you're in a, a mindset, which she obviously was. And so she recites what she says young Pharaoh did to her. It sounds horrible. It's absolutely just unimaginable what people have to go through if they're living in a home or they have children with someone and they are subjected to violence. It is a horrendous situation to be in. I absolutely do feel for Golden Beauty. I see that she is incredibly distressed about this whole situation. But thankfully the child was put top priority when the officer showed up. So here is what I want to say about this whole situation with these allegations. Absolutely 100%. If these allegations have merit, and let's keep it very clear, merit does not mean uncontroverted truth. It does not mean this has to be gathered on a videotape. The standard of proof is considered beyond a reasonable doubt. It's not absolute certainty without all doubt, it's beyond a reasonable doubt. We don't have to have video, but there was some talk about her saying, you said you recorded this. What did you do? Record yourself hitting me? Well, young Pharaoh apparently has security at the house. So if you have security at the home, I'm not thinking you would just have security. You have security. You also have surveillance. Hopefully there was surveillance of the incident because you cannot just go and erase surveillance because their surveillance video goes to a central location. If your security system was, is worth anything that way people can't come to your home when they're breaking in and destroy it. I don't know if young Pharaoh will have security system monitoring. Hopefully he does for the safety of him and his family. We don't know that remains to be seen. So the video ends and according to the video, there hasn't been an arrest. And I'm gonna check again before I post this video. Just because there isn't an arrest doesn't mean the person did not engage in that behavior. So let's get that straight. What do we do in a situation like this? You have two people saying two different things. But does anyone think that young Pharaoh was going to admit or concede that he assaulted golden beauty. I don't believe he will. We are going to see how this is going to turn out, but I want to talk about the wide ranging implications of a situation like this, because you have two parents who have been on the internet going back and forth and trust you, me, you have the freedom to say what you want to say. I am a strong, supporter of freedom of speech as long as you are not threatening people as long as you are not doxing people as long as you are not harassing people however both young pharaoh and golden beauty are trading allegations this is going to have to take an intervention absolutely we have our opinions but a side is not going to prevail based on them talking about it on YouTube. Since law enforcement showed up, they have contacted, I'm guaranteeing you this because it's the law in every state. When there are children involved and she's told the officer that young Pharaoh struck her with the child in her arms, which is extremely serious, obviously, law enforcement has to put in a call to child welfare, AKA CPS. So I'm going to talk to you about what the process is. Am I going to say right now, young Pharaoh did this? How can I say that? She sounds upset. She sounds credible, but would it be fair to say he absolutely did assault the mother of his child? We are going to find out, and I am highly interested in finding out, I'm going to be following this case. So this will not be the only video. I can't draw a conclusion at this point, but in the event, this scenario, and I hope it isn't, but if it is, that's not going to make any difference. He needs to be 
and must be held 100% accountable. I want to let all of you know what becomes of a situation like this. Although I don't know the intricate details of their situation, I want to make sure there is a distinction between relationship issues if they agree to go into this communal living, AKA polygamy situation, that is one thing. How they live their lives, although as a missionary Baptist raised, I would not do that, but that's not me. If somebody decides they want to live the life that they were describing, they get to do that. That is one thing. That is what you would call a personal and private situation. But for the fact, Young Pharaoh and Golden Beauty are coming on and giving their views. Now, before I go on to the next part, I want to acknowledge something which some people probably will not be happy with me saying, but I'm going to be honest about it. There is an inequity when you start to have men versus women coming onto the internet and making allegations, especially if the man is calling the woman's character into question. We know what the man says has much more of a negative impact on the woman personally. And when you look at the community perspective, because women, you are not supposed to be doing this. Oh my goodness. A woman with bad character gets eviscerated a lot more intensely than a man with a bad character. Example, if there were allegations that young, that Golden Beauty, excuse me, was being promiscuous or even not a good mother, because these are some of the things Young Fair was saying about her not being a good mother, that devastates a woman. If you say, young Pharaoh, you're not a good father. Of course he will be unhappy about that, but the community doesn't look at that in the same way that it looks at it when you're talking about someone being a bad mother. Young Pharaoh, you are sleeping with all of these women. Well, we just talked about communal relationships and polygamy. That is not going to be seen as a negative. Even if a man is sleeping around with different women and he's not in a polygamous type or communal relationship, is that negatively looked upon? Generally speaking, no. A man is giving kudos if he goes out there and has sex with all these women. So Golden Beauty, I admit, is at a very serious disadvantage based on the inequity that exists when it comes to impugning a woman's character versus impugning a man's character. So there's one thing I'm not happy with young Pharaoh. Young Pharaoh is aware of this. So he's taken advantage of this. And that is something I do have an issue with. Golden Beauty absolutely has a right to defend herself. And I think she was doing a valiant job of doing that. That you're criticizing me, you're criticizing me about the type of woman that I am, but for all those years and all those videos, you praised me. So yes, I'm glad that Golden Beauty came up and defended herself, but you can still tell this is impacting her. And I don't know her personally, so I'm not saying I'm doing any assessment. I feel this is having a big impact on her like it would most every woman. If the man you were in a relationship with came on and start impugning your character. How could you really defend yourself? Now, if the person doesn't know you, it's not as bad. But do you remember when Angela Yee was accused of sleeping with, I can't remember who it was. Oh my goodness, the world was going to cave in. She got on here and was extremely adamant about him retracting that. Because we know how people look at that. If Charlemagne, or DJ Envy were accused of sleeping around, they wouldn't really be so anxious to get a retraction. I mean, she sought a formal retraction of that statement and did interviews. So that is the disadvantage. Now, let me 
backtrack to what I was saying a few seconds ago about their personal relationship, the communal living, those types of decisions, although you think it is disgusting, what can we say? If they decide to live like that, they decide to live like that. That is very different from allegations of domestic violence. Allegations of domestic violence have the potential to be charged in criminal court. So that would not be personal. It would not be private. It would not be confidential. It is for public domain because I saw people saying things like, well, it's their personal business. Their relationship, like I just stated, and how they choose to go about the relationship, whether it's young Pharaoh and Golden Beauty and three other women or young Pharaoh without Golden Beauty or Golden Beauty going off, that's personal and private. But when you're talking about domestic violence, allegations, that is not secret, confidential, personal, or private. And people might be saying, well, it's not fair because she's accusing him. It's an accusation. It's an allegation. It hasn't yet been proven by law. Hasn't yet been proven. I'm going to be following this case. I'm highly motivated to see if we can get to the bottom of this situation in terms of finding out what occurred, because it is a public incident. It's a public allegation. It's not private. So people trying to tell people it's none of our business. It is our business. It absolutely is our business. All criminal acts are public domain. All allegations of criminal acts are public domain. Now, you and me probably cannot go and get a copy of the police report because it involves allegations of domestic violence and most states have protections on those police reports. You and me probably cannot go and get a copy of the police report as private citizens, but a journalist can, and it will be redacted. Journalists can get their hands on that report immediately. So we can find out before you start criticizing Al, maybe Al could help us. I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> Not that Al has an interest. That's the value of journalists. So before you start trashing everybody, recognize the value of different professions and what they can do to help us get to the bottom of certain situations. There were some people saying things like, how could she accuse him of this? He took her out of the ghetto and he, put her up on a pedestal and now she's calling the cops on him. Listen, anybody who was assaulted needs to call the police. She says she was assaulted. There would be no other sensible approach, any reasonable approach to provide a woman and her child an option other than to notify law enforcement. This puts you at risk if you do not call law enforcement. And let me explain to you why. We know when people, couples get into these situations with domestic violence being alleged, you better know children for better or for worse, however you want to put it, are used as leverage. Now, I don't have any idea if this applies to young Pharaoh and Golden Beauty, but I'm going to give you the scenario about what proceeds after the police are involved and they did call child welfare because it is mandated in every state to make that call to child welfare, AKA CPS. So child welfare will come in and they will attempt to interview both parents. Do you know it is not mandatory for you to be interviewed by child welfare? You can decline. Just letting you know right off the bat, both parents or one parent can decline to be interviewed. They can lawyer up because this is potentially criminal charges. So let's pretend that the parents do interview. Based on what Golden Beauty, and this is all hypothetical in terms of ultimate outcome, based on her words, she says that young Pharaoh has a history of domestic violence. He has done this before. She even stated in her own words, that he had assaulted the mother of another child. So let's bring in child welfare, CPS, and they're going to talk to both parents. Both parents are gonna cooperate. But let's say 
the interview takes place both parents separately of course let's start with the person who's accused of the domestic violence but let's say the interview takes place both parents separately of course let's start with the person who's accused of the domestic violence the person denies it i did not do that if she's lying in, in this case we're talking about a man accused of assaulting, assaulting a woman i didn't do it it's not true and this person has all these stories to tell young pharaoh was saying some things and i'm not going to repeat what he was saying because i don't want to impugn golden beauty's character okay he was making some allegations child welfare is just it's going to take the information down because we're going to talk to both parents so finish up that interview right then you go to the person who stated she was assaulted and the person proceeds to give a litany of incidents of domestic violence how the, they were assaulted on different occasions how the children were there how the children were involved i want to ask you all do you think that is going to help or impair the case for the person who says they were assaulted repeatedly do you know what that is called when someone is interviewed by child welfare or cps and they recite a litany of domestic violence allegations that they didn't report obviously that's called unreported domestic violence that can be held against that parent and i'll tell you why they are saying okay the person assaulted you and i'm just making up a number 10 times with the children in the home and the children were present and you remained no you're not being punished for remaining there the concern would be are you being a protective parent by continuing to live in a situation where you are being assaulted and your children are being exposed to violence? That's the question. That is considered non-protective. However, that is not the end of it. There are interventions that can be offered in a situation like this because the goal is not to say, all right, mother, you are the worst mother in the world. We're going to yank the children from you. Okay, dad, you're the worst dad in the world. We're going to yank the children from you. No, that is not how it works. Most states have adopted by legislation, the 50, 50 rule, which means both parents start out even, and it's going to take an incredible amount of incriminating information and data to rip a parent completely away from his or her child and not give him or her any custody or visitation rights or legal rights. That is a very high standard. And as a matter of fact, courts look very negatively upon any parent that tries to exclude the other parent because they consider both parents being involved is being in the best interest of the child. If there are issues and they're going to be looking into everything i can guarantee you now this is something i've worked with for many 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 years they're going to look at medical background they're going to look at to see whether or not either parent has mental health issues do they have substance abuse issues now let me say when i say mental health issues and substance abuse issues i'm not talking about you just get down and, and blue sometimes and you just, okay, I want to take a break. I need to separate myself from people. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about mental health issues to the point it is considered impairing or it is a risk to anyone, either the other parent or the children. Does the person have a prescription for psychiatric medication? Is there a diagnosis? If the answers are yes, they are going to want that parent to be on that plan. If there is a doctor that stated this person is diagnosed, this person has been prescribed medication, you had better believe the child welfare is going to insist upon that parent resuming treatment. Go to the other parent who 
has reported the violence. Does this person need any sort of evaluation for mental health? What is this person's background? They do not take the parent who has been accused and focus everything on that parent. They are 50-50 when they start digging into the background of each parent. Sometimes when you think this person is an aggressor and they're the ones that's going to get slammed, you would be surprised what information is revealed when you look at both sides completely. I have to make sure it's very clear when I'm saying child welfare. Whatever child welfare is putting forth, this has to be brought to court and a judge is going to have to endorse that. And there's multiple sides that have a say. So I'm just talking about child welfare when we're responding to domestic violence allegations. And there is a potential court case. The decision will be made by the judge. The information will be bought by child welfare and every side has attorneys if this is going to be in the legal system to advocate for his or her behalf. So child welfare is not making exclusive decisions. I want to make that clear. Let me give you an example. Do you remember Relisha Rudd? She was a child that came up missing from the shelter, the old hospital in Washington, DC. It was a shelter and her mother and father allowed her to go off with this older man who was taking care of her and this child ends up missing. They never found her body. Come to find out the man who was last seen with her, you see all the pictures here, ended up committing suicide. Prior to that, he killed his wife because he knew they were on him, coming after him. Why is this related? How is this related? Relisha Rudd had two siblings. And so the court had to decide the mother's decision making, the father's decision making, is it intact enough to protect the two remaining children? They had to go to court for this. And the court decided no, dependency court. So they took the two children, placed them in foster care because they were saying, if you allowed your daughter to go off with a man, live with him, and she ends up missing and we have all these other issues going on you're on social media acting pretty much it was people bizarre they did not feel those parents were protected here's what the next stage is if the parents aren't able to take for the take care of these children they're in temporary foster care now we go to the family who else in the family can take care of these children you had a bunch of relatives showing up so this is why I tell people, just because there are relatives around doesn't mean they're going to be qualified to care for these children. So Relisha Rudd's family showed up in droves. One of the people who showed up, actually, let me clarify, was Relisha's bio dad. She was actually living with the stepfather. The court decided he would not be able to take custody of the other two children because he had given up his parental rights. You giving up parental rights, you exclude yourself. We don't trust you to come and take care of these kids when you gave up your parental rights. So he was asked to leave. Then Relisha's mother's father, the grandfather came up and he wanted to take custody of the two children. And he was told no, and I'll explain why. He had killed one of his daughters, had beat her so severely, she bled on the brain and died. He went to prison for eight or nine years, but he was excluded. So they kept going down the whole list and there was no one in the family with a solid enough history to be able to take care of Relisha Rudd's two siblings. So they were placed in foster care. I don't know what ultimately happened, but it was disastrous. So here's a situation when you get child welfare involved, they're going to be going to the ends of the earth to get the situation in order. I know people are going to be having a heart attack 
It is not as cut and dry as people say it is, which is why we need to get more information about this case. And the goal will not to be to boot out one of the parents. And it seems like young Pharaoh is gunning for that. That is not going to fare very well. He's going to be very disappointed because no court is going to just come up and say, the mother is completely incompetent and you get all custody. That is going to have to be proven. Golden Beauty is defending herself. One of the things she's going to have an issue with that she's holding the baby in her arms and she was screaming and hollering and carrying on. They're going to ding her for that, but that does not mean she is incompetent as a mother. This just means there needs to be another manner of coping. And if she asserts that there has been a domestic violence incident slash incidents, they are going to put her to the test and say, get a restraining order. If you are interested in protecting your child, you should be willing to get a restraining order. If she does not get a restraining order, that is going to be considered non-protective. Now, so far, someone has said that young Pharaoh has a restraining order. I do not know that to be true. I would have to see that. I don't know what the grounds would be, but guarantee you, if you are alleging all of these domestic violence incidents, CPS slash child welfare is going to put the squeeze on you to get a restraining order. That means you are serious about keeping the violence away from your child. And whether or not there will be supervised visits, we don't know. That will be up to the court if this case even goes to this length. This is what I wanted to let everybody know. It's not just about the incident. It goes so far beyond. And if child welfare is involved, they are going to hold both parents to their individual case plans. They're individualized based on their histories. If they have mental health concerns, have they been seen by a doctor? Are they on psychiatric medications? What is their history? Did they have a history of child abuse? that is unresolved for either parent, they're going to insist on professional services so those issues can be addressed because whether someone is in the aggressor position or if they are in a situation where they are continuing to remain when they're victimized, those situations tend to be intergenerational. So they're looking to interrupt those cycles both parents will be held accountable when it comes to protecting the child, whether you are the aggressor or the person who remains and doesn't take appropriate action to protect the children. It's not gonna be, you get everything and you get nothing. That is not going to happen. So that's why I hesitate when people talk about either or. It's not an either or. It's trying to improve the situation for the benefit of the children. That is going to be the goal. The mud slinging on both sides is going to fare very negatively when it comes up in front of a judge. If it gets that far, it is not going to help either one's situation and they can be incriminating themselves. Based on what they're saying, go ahead, you have free speech, speak away. It could come back to haunt you. So this would be my intro in terms of how I feel about this situation. If it gets to the next stage, there is going to be child welfare intervention and both parents are gonna be held to a case plan. We are going to see what happens. And it's not gonna be somebody gets everything and the other parent gets nothing. Even if a court initially decides that, the other parent gets the opportunity to work towards gaining custody back into a 50-50 stance. That is the goal. Now let's make this clear. Having 50-50 custody is one thing. Someone deciding whether or not they're going to exercise that is another thing. You see all these people up here complaining, I can't see my kid all along. They have the custody, but they're not exercising it. That is very different from a court saying, you don't have 50-50 custody, or you have 35 custody, or you have 40% custody. Whatever custody you have, 
that does not stop you from seeing your child. So make sure there is a distinction between the two. The bottom line is this, the children deserve to be protected. And it's up to the adults on both sides to protect the children. If there's any indication that either parent is non-protective, there is going to be an intervention and there's going to be an expectation that there be improvements. The case plan will be followed. If there is somebody who has mental health issues or has been prescribed medication, they're gonna to need to get an evaluation. This is on either side. And they're gonna to have to take that medication or get that treatment or it's going to impact the decision about custody. Same thing applies if there are any other issues regarding substance abuse, that the substance abuse is impairing the ability to care for the children or the substance abuse is exacerbating any pre-existing condition. Is it illicit drug use? What exactly is the situation? All of those things will be explored, but it will be equal. It's not going to say, you parent, I'm not going to ask you about drug abuse or substance abuse, but you parent, I am. All the same questions are posed and then some. This is what everyone goes through if your case gets up to a judge and there's decisions made in the dependency court. So get ready, people. All these YouTube videos, not going to fare well for either Young Pharaoh or Golden Beauty. We are going to see what's going to happen. In the meantime, you know the drill. Stay safe. Buyer, beware. Okay, I'm giving those who are interested the brief background as to why I'm a very strong Young Pharaoh supporter. This goes back years when he first came onto YouTube. He's about, I think he was like 21 or 22. Very young, very rough around the edges. Was on supervised release which means probation for some serious felonies. And what struck me about young Pharaoh is about how determined he was to complete probation without any violations. He had all of these plans and dreams. And to make it clear, I never was attracted to young Pharaoh in terms of supporting him because he was pro-black or that he spoke to the women's issues as he was doing. It was his motivation to reform from what he had experienced. And he was determined to do that. Other issues that he started talking about, I agreed with, not everything. I agree with young Pharaoh, but the determination to be successful with the supervised release. Because I support reform, I support rehabilitation. He was extremely rough around the edges. And then he started to smooth out. Some of you might say, really? No, people, he was, if people know him back then, it was extremely rough. Then there started to be a whole host of people setting upon young Pharaoh, I guess because he made his plans known, started submitting all these accusations against him. It was relentless, people. False reporting. When I say false reporting, most of the situations ended up being unsubstantiated. However, as they continued to escalate, he was dragged into court time and time and time again for accusations of threatening to kill people. I mean, it became extremely outrageous, but the legal system thought there was merit to these allegations. Every single case that was brought to him he prevailed in court and he did it without losing his temper, without going off the rails. So I thought in that respect, he was a good example because if you're in the system, you're not going to get out of the system if you don't cooperate. And he cooperated and he moved off of supervised release while he was making money. Now, to my knowledge, the money making was legit. I have no indication that he was engaging in illegal behaviors. Let's talk about the money. These different allegations about the financial impropriety and being a fraud. Young Pharaoh came to YouTube and presented documentations and ledgers and bank records. 
Who else has done that, people? You don't have to believe it. You can say he's a fraud still. Who else has come to YouTube and put that all out and went over the documents during live streams? How many people have done that? Has Umar Johnson done that? I remember Sonetta did it once. He was doing a campaign for some sort of project or activity that was coming up. And he showed the GoFundMe ledger when people were donating money. And it was a short-term project. But all of these allegations, young Pharaoh says that he debunked them. Again, you can decide not to believe him. That is your right. But one of the most serious or the most serious accusations that was leveled against him is that he had all of these automatic weapons and was planning to take over a courthouse. And then he was threatening a certain woman and he came on and told the story after the case was resolved and he still didn't give her name, but she made all of these allegations against him and he actually went to trial and was acquitted. People, could it be he's slick SOB? Hey, maybe, maybe not. But people were gunning for him because of disputes online. They were making up more and more outrageous complaints against young Pharaoh. They were calling the probation officer. And trust you me, I support calling probation officers. If a person really is doing something, if you feel the person has done something and it's illegal, by all means, call probation. But a lot of these things were malicious and deliberate. So none of the complaints prevailed. As far as this goes, I don't know what's going to happen. So this is what I support. I support rehabilitation. I support reform. I am not happy with young Pharaoh's disposition towards the mother and what he is saying. I am hoping he will come around and show people another example of reforming. At this point in time, I have my concerns. But he went through all five years of supervised release, never was restricted from the internet, never had a citation, not a single blemish. But the reason why he was kept on for the whole time is because these people kept making these allegations against him. So that is why I supported young Pharaoh because people were coming for him and he had an ambition to be independent. Again, I don't support the communal living, but that is not my life. And I absolutely will never ever support and endorse anyone who engages in domestic violence. If there is a conviction or a credible allegation, I am going to see how young Pharaoh approaches that. Because if he's ordered to go and get services, I am going to look at his disposition towards those orders. Keep in mind, I do not look at somebody because they say that they're pro-black. It had nothing to do with it. It was his motivation to improve himself after being detained in custody and having a lot of issues in childhood and a bunch of stuff going on and the motivation he had to become independent. People reserve their right to have an opinion about young Pharaoh. I stopped really talking about him on the channel because I know many of you are extremely polarized in your opinion about him. Whatever the case, he should be held accountable if he did engage in these acts and he needs the opportunity to rehabilitate if he did. Let's see what happens. I'm going to be covering this case. I'm going to be following it very closely. So you are going to hear from me again, again, a double buyer beware access resources to keep safe.